new gameplay trailer for Demon's Souls was just revealed, and the interviews and articles that were released alongside it have basically answered every remaining question we had about the game. Stay tuned for what's new and staying the same in the Demon's Souls remake. First up, omnidirectional rolling is finally confirmed. You can kind of see it happening in the Flame Lurker fight, and creative director Gavin Moore confirms it is eight-way rolling, which I honestly think is just such a crucial quality of life improvement for new and returning players. And a lot of features like this, like the camera and the game's filters, these can actually be reverted back to how they were in the original game, so that players new and old can get really close to that classic experience if they want to. If you've read the comments on any of my videos, it's split down the middle between people who want something new and people who really want to relive the original, so hopefully this pleases both camps, because if you want that janky camera that clips and gets stuck on everything, they've said you can enable that. Uh, do you want the game to be greener, darker, and just less cluttered? Then you can switch over to that filter seamlessly. And they're also adding a ton of other filters, probably similar to what you can see in their Shadow of the Colossus remake. There's even going to be a photo mode in the game, which will work as long as you're not in multiplayer, and will allow you to pause the game and have powerful control over your screenshots. And I wouldn't usually say this for a console game, but as if you were playing a PC game, it sounds like the first thing you should do when you boot up this game is go into the options and just play around with everything to find what suits you. In my opinion, you'll at least want to make sure that performance mode is turned on so the game is locked to 60 frames per second, and make sure your camera is in its fixed mode, not the cinematic mode that you're actually seeing right now. And you have a second set of options that are available to you, and they're actually located in-game, in the Nexus, most likely at the statue where you spawn in. Here, you'll be able to turn on Fractured Mode, which has been revealed to be a mirror mode that flips the entire game horizontally, so you can basically play every map in reverse. You'll also be able to pay a certain amount of souls to, and I quote, store your character here. This is really weird wording. It's almost implying that you'll be able to sort of hot swap characters in and out of the world. So if I go here and I look at my list of characters and I change characters, does that mean the world also changes to suit my character? Am I just pulling one of my other characters into this world, wouldn't that break the game? And if I'm just coming here to change characters, why am I paying souls for it? Do you guys have any ideas? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But mirror mode is actually such an intriguing thing to add to the game. Playing flipped maps might actually throw you for a bit of a loop if you're someone who is really familiar with a world. It might almost feel like playing it for the first time a little bit. And it's also really good from a lore perspective to have all these things happen in the Nexus. Remember, the fabric of reality is broken in the outside world, and the Nexus is what holds it all together, so it kind of makes sense that the Nexus is also what could control that reality, and, you know, flip the world horizontally, pull different characters into the world, that sort of thing kind of makes sense. Apparently you can also absolve your sins here, and while we're in the Nexus, we might as well talk about the Broken Arch Stone. Spoiler alert we can finally confirm that no new worlds or levels have been added to the game, and the cut content behind the sixth Broken Arch Stone has not been restored. Bluepoint says that they felt it was not their right to reimagine this cut content, and while I'm intensely curious about what that cut content could have looked like, I think this was the right and honestly predictable decision. Unless From Software decide to collaborate with Bluepoint on some DLC, which would be awesome, the closest thing you're going to get to the world beyond this archstone is in the art competition we ran a few months ago, so go and check that out if you're so inclined. But you have to respect Bluepoint's integrity here. They are mostly intent on this really honest remake that is pretty true to the original developer's intentions. As such, you'll be happy to know that there are no different difficulty modes, and even world tendency is in the game in its true and honest form, although they say now that you will more easily be able to figure out what level your world tendency is at for each world. So Bluepoint clearly have a line that they won't cross for changes, and now we pretty much know exactly where this line is for them. But one thing that surprised me is that, according to the creative director, they won't be removing all of the bugs in the game. 
Apparently, they're going to intentionally leave in some of the less consequential meme-worthy bugs and game design quirks that the game used to have. So I would assume this means that they're going to leave in things like sequence breaks, which let you skip parts of the level, and they've said they're going to remove things like attacking bosses through fog gates. But I've also heard rumors that the duplication glitch does remain in the game, which I kind of disagree with, but okay. Another thing that you might not have expected to be faithfully kept in the game is enemy AI. Here we see the flame lurker jankily running around the arena, just like he does in the original game, which I kind of love, and I find it kind of funny that it's still here. In this trailer, sorcery is also shown for the first time. Uh, we see a sort of soul ray here, which looks to be doing some sort of piercing or AoE damage, and also strangely hones in to different parts of the enemy at times. We also see the kick animation briefly, and this really sick backstab animation, this time for the mace category of weapons. And it probably goes without saying at this point, but man, the finer details and the polish here are so gorgeous when you spot them. Uh, from the lightning flash through the roof of the Tower of Latria, from the incredible texture work to the sound design, Bluepoint are best in class at this stuff, there is no doubt about it. There is one change that I'm really excited about, and it's for weapons. So Bluepoint says that while the cadence and speed of weapon animations will remain the same, the animations themselves are different, which is actually such a wonderful idea because so many of the weapons in Demon Souls have exactly the same movesets within their weapon class, and adding new animations is going to be so good for giving each weapon its own character. And the way these weapons feel, thanks to the new haptics feedback on the controller, is by all accounts of the PS5 controller, nothing short of incredible. Go out and watch some videos on that actually. I've been watching a lot of first impressions videos and everyone points that out. So because the mechanism behind the haptics this time around is so much more nuanced and better engineered than previously, it can really simulate the feeling of different surfaces or vibrations. So for example, in Demon's Souls, you should be able to feel a pretty accurate simulation of the material your weapon is hitting. So for example, metal hitting metal or metal cutting through flesh. This should make the combat feel grittier and more visceral. It's possible that the surface that your character is walking on might even be taken into account, which will make the environment feel more alive. The same sort of thing can be said about the 3D audio. Uh, anything that enters your character's 3D space will be able to be heard, like an enemy sneaking up behind you or an arrow whizzing past your ear. Hopefully this all makes the game feel more real and weightier. But you know what else might be weightier? Your inventory. In the original Demon's Souls, there was a limit to how many items your character could carry. And honestly, while I'm all for no changes, this sucked, and I really hope it gets removed or changed in the remake. But one set of items that are confirmed to have weight are your healing grasses, which is the consumable that you heal with in Demon's Souls. Now, stronger grasses weigh more, whereas in the original, you could have 99 of the most powerful grass and just spam it so that you could never die. So this is a good change. It sounds like honestly, the system is going to be more like Bloodborne's Blood Vial system, where you can find healing items out in the world, but you can only carry a limited amount. They've also added new consumables to the game. There's a new category called Grains, which all give you different temporary elemental resistances. You might have seen these in this preview window, which is showing off the items that you get if you buy the Digital Deluxe Edition. And man, we're at that part of the video. We need to talk about what is objectively the worst part of this remake. So previously, it was hoped that all of the items on this Digital Deluxe preview were just simply early access items. We were all hoping that, sure, if you buy the Digital Deluxe version, you get these items on every new character you create. You get them early, that makes you more powerful, but we hoped that you would still be able to find these items out in the game, even if you just bought the standard edition of the game. Well, it's been revealed on the official site that three of these items are exclusive to the deluxe version. The Red Eye Knight armor, 
Boletarian royalty armor and ritual blade will only be for people who spend 90 US dollars. So that's 20 more dollars than the standard edition of the game, which like all next gen games costs $10 more for some reason. The rest of these items will be given to your character upon creation, but will also be able to be found in game. This is bad. You will be locked out of these character equipment choices if you don't want to shell out $20 for these three items, or even pre-order the game for the Reaper's Scythe up in the top right. I don't care if these items are weak. I don't care if they're not viable in PvP. Sony's tagline for the PlayStation 5 is, play has no limits, and this is a limit. This flies directly in the face of that. Now, there are people you should and shouldn't blame for this. You shouldn't blame the developers at Bluepoint. You shouldn't blame anyone at From Software. None of these people were likely involved in this decision. If this comes from anywhere, it comes from higher-ups at Bluepoint or Sony, and guess what? That's where most of the profits go to. Next-gen games are already arbitrarily $10 more expensive, and adding more shallow rewards like this kind of just adds insult to injury, in my opinion. Now. I'm not saying boycott the remake, but I think part of being a good fan is just honestly criticizing the games that you love, and while I think Bluepoint and Sony seem to be doing an excellent job with the remake, this is not in line with what Souls fans have come to expect, and it's a slippery slope. If we're all okay with this kind of thing happening, it'll just get worse year after year. So, in my opinion, Sony should and probably can reverse course on this before it's too late, and they should just make all items early access, but still accessible in-game for holders of the standard edition. I think it's the right PR move, considering their tagline, and yeah, anyway. Subscribe for more Demon Souls content at launch here and also on my Twitch channel where I'll be streaming the game in a couple of weeks now and I'll see you there.